And at the end of the day, it's, it's art. And when you're an artist, you can paint anything you want to paint. You don't have to stick to a script. You don't have to be what what they say you are or what people perceive you as. You know, you can be who you want to be and do it how you want to do it. What I want to say to you is how to build your confidence artistically slash creatively. It's been a little bit since I've just strictly stuck to what it is to do things on the creative side or on the artistic side. But this time I actually want to touch on that because it's something that I'm dealing with now, something that I'm watching people in my team deal with and something that other friends that are in the creative field are dealing with currently. It's just one of those things that you battle from time to time in the creative space. One of the easiest ways to build confidence in your creativity is to do it over and over and over again. They say practice makes perfect, but to be honest with you, I say practice makes progress because the more you do it, the easier it gets, the more comfortable you feel, and that essentially will start building your confidence because you'll start working out those kinks. You'll start working out those mistakes. You'll start working out the places where you're having hardships and where you may need to seek help or guidance for things that you need to work on and improve or just don't know. Well, with that, building your confidence, you also have to know how did you lose your confidence? Or did you even have it to begin with? Well, when you're starting something new, typically you're on shaky ground or you might have anxiety or you might have a little bit of stress or just fear. That's all okay because you're entering into something that you've never done before. So you have to find a way to build your confidence around new things. When it's things that you have done before and you find that your confidence is wavering or your confidence is not where it typically is or where it needs to be, it could just be maybe you haven't touched that thing in a while or maybe the last time you did it, you didn't have the success that you felt you should have. Well, there's a number of factors that contribute to that. One could be how much time did you have to work on it? Two could be, were you prepared? Three could be, do you feel like you truly wanted to do the project? And that may sound kind of funny to say, did you truly want to do the project? But sometimes as creatives, we take on projects, not because we want to do them, but because we need the money or we just need to gain the experience to take on another job because it just looks good going forward. It doesn't necessarily mean that you really wanted to do the job. Not everything that you do as a creative is something that you want to do. Some things that you do as a creative, you're just doing because it's checking off a box or it's filling a gap or it's fulfilling the current need of that moment. With that being said, your confidence may not be totally there or you may just not be feeling it. Like I said before, to build your confidence in anything creative, just continue to do it, practice it. But this is something that will make building your confidence in a creative space a little bit easier too. Don't feel like you have to do everything. That is something to think about. Why don't you have to do everything? Well, we're not necessarily just trained to do every piece of the creative. Like some people are trained to do the motion graphics. Some people are tra trained to edit. Some people are trained to do sound. Some people are trained to do the photography or whatever the case may be. There's so many different avenues. It makes no sense for me to go through all of them. If you are a creative or thinking about being a creative, just know there's a lot of creative spaces. If you're not trained in all of those things, don't sit there and try to learn them all. Find people who can do those things really well that can assist you because then it allows you to stay in the places where you excel. Now, I will point this out. Now, if it's things that you want to learn, then that's a little bit different. You're taking on a project where you're not too sure about what's going on. Your confidence is already going to be kind of wavering. 
but still find somebody who knows how to do the parts that you're not so strong at or find somebody who you can lean on for support. So that way, when you get stuck, they can walk you through it or they can help you into it in a better way. So that way you're not just starting from ground zero. And I'm saying this as somebody who has done this many times before. What I will say is, yes, the wrong way in the professional space. Saying you can do something just because you've touched it before, but you're not the greatest at it. <clears throat> you're doing it essentially out of necessity. Sometimes when you do it that way, it's not that you don't have the confidence. It's just that you don't have the knowledge and the know-how to do it to the full potential that the job needs to be done. Is that your fault? Not always. Sometimes it's that your job or somebody has thrown you into something because they know that you can. But with that, it's, you can do it doesn't mean that you're the best one to do it. When you're thrown into situations where you're having to do something that you're not the best at, that then can shake your confidence. Because if people are saying, we need you to move faster, or we need you to do this better, or we need you to do this, or this isn't working out, or these things just aren't lining up the way that they thought the project should be lining up, but you're doing the best that you can do, they don't realize that they're actually killing your confidence. And sometimes you don't realize that they're killing your confidence because you're just trying to get the job done. You don't want to be the weak link. And then what happens is you get stuck up here because now you don't necessarily ask for help because they've trusted you with something, believing that you can do it, and now you don't want to necessarily admit that you can't. Well, that's a two-way street that's gonna go bad. Because one, now you're wrecking your confidence, and two, you're gonna kinda ruin how the job or client sees you because if you don't know how to do something, one, you should just say it. If you don't know how to do it the way they need it done, then you should ask for help. It's not up to them to figure it out for you, but sometimes, yes, if you've said that before and they still throw you into the situation, then ultimately, yes, they are getting what they get. But if somebody is paying for it, they don't see it that way. Let's continue to build on how to build your confidence. One, we were saying practice. And we're in here talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Two, I said Find people who can assist you so that you can further your knowledge of it or just find people who can do that area so you don't have to do it. You can delegate the work. But then three, a big way to build your confidence as well is just be willing to try. Sometimes being willing to try can build your confidence because what it allows you to see and allows other people to see is you're not scared of a challenge. That one can also hurt you, but it can also build you up because the fact that you didn't back down from the challenge, if you succeed, or let's say when you succeed at that challenge, you then will feel a sense of happiness and satisfaction that you could not get any other way. You have conquered something that you had never conquered before. You basically one. So now your confidence is starting to build. Now your skill is starting to build. Now who you are as a creative is starting to build because it's not always just the skill that you learned. It's how you got to learn the skill. It's how you cross over that finish line. It's how you deal with hardships. It's how you deal with those moments when everything was on your shoulders. The best way to prove yourself as a creative and to project as a more confident creative is ultimately to do what you do. Now, you don't want to be overly cocky. You don't want to be arrogant, but you do want to display a sense of confidence about yourself. You do want to walk with your head high. You do want to be able to look the client or your employer or your teammates in the eye when you are saying, this is my creative, this is what I've done, this is what I'm proud of. That is the biggest confidence builders because you are 
becoming that person to people. But most of all, you're becoming that creative to yourself. Some things as a creative, you can't prove until you do it. One thing I can say about being a creative, and I didn't know this when I went into it, and I'm learning it more as I get further into it, And when I say further into it, I'm more than 20 years in and I'm still learning. But the further you go, what you start to understand is that piece of paper that says I graduated or I have this degree or I I hold these certificates, it only really means enough to have people look at what you can do. Your experience carries way more weight in most cases. Once somebody opens that door to your resume or your education level, what you can do is what keeps the door open. What you can do is what puts you in the seat. What you can do is what's gonna keep you in the seat. And then not just what you can do, how you do it, how you handle the hard situations, how you are as a creative. Because nobody wants a weak creative on their team. I mean, you wouldn't want a weak link on your team in general, because the weakest link on your team ultimately is your team. So you want your team to be just as strong as the strongest person on your team. And yes, that weak link will have to build to that, but you don't want to go into it going that I'm the weak link or I don't know this or So I'm not confident in my skill level. Be confident in your learning ability as well. Be confident in in your can-do attitude. Be confident in the fact that you're just willing to try. Because if you're confident in those things, people can teach you the rest. Hard work goes a long way in the realm of confidence building. If you're willing to put in the work, your confidence is gonna grow. If you're not willing to put in the work and things aren't working out, your confidence is going to go down. So ultimately what I'm telling you is always be willing. Be willing to put yourself in position to do what needs to be done. Something I tend to say is if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And I'm a firm believer that that is true. But staying ready doesn't mean that you always know what to do. It just means that when your name is called or when it's time for you to step up, you will. And then you can learn from there. When I was taught to be a creative in the early levels of being a creative, one of the things that was told to me is never say you can't. Always say, yes, I can do it, or yes, I can learn it, or yes, I'm willing. Just give me this much time and I can figure it out. And I still do that to this day. When you say you can't, you're already closing the door. But when you say, I'll try, I'm willing, can you teach me? Those are all things letting people know that even if we don't use this person in this particular instance, going forward, this person is going to go the extra mile to do whatever it takes to get the job done, or at least to build on their skill as a creative. So just be willing to do those things, but keep your confidence high. And yes, I'm saying keep your confidence high because it does revolve a lot on you too. It's how you handle critique. It's how you handle criticism. It's how you handle being knocked down. Building your confidence, you can't put that on other people, regardless of what they say, because it's you. You have to know above all else that you got it. I'm telling you, you got it. Even if you walk in the room and you feel like this might not be it, don't let other people see it. Project the winning attitude. In projecting a winning attitude, you can still ask questions, but just let people know you have it. That is something that they can't teach you. So with that being said, what I'm gonna ask you to do is like this video and subscribe to my channel, Creatively Speaking, because I like doing this. I'm also gonna ask you to continue to build your confidence up. Continue to keep your confidence as high as possible, but be as creative as you can be. Don't let anybody kill that in you, even if you gotta do it through your own side projects. Be creative, find a way to be creative. And also with that, stay mentally clear. If this isn't right, nothing else is going to work for long. I hope you got a lot out of this. Share this video with somebody and until next time, I'm out.